Why do we look at 3D printed antennas? We're making it fun. So I'm busy with a, I'd say a three part series on 3D printed antennas and some materials. Three parts in terms of, I'm doing three different things with my 3D printed um, assembly that I have here next to me. So basically in this video and maybe even a subsequent one, so I'm just gonna ask the questions on your behalf, why am I doing this? And I'm just saying that because the answer is pretty simple. There's a bit of passion. There's a, um, a love for education and teaching, maths and science, and all these nerdy things. And it really is just awesome to explore some of the newer technologies that are out there. 3D printing, um, of course, 5G, faster Wi-Fi as well, Wi-Fi 6E coming out of these dishes that are made down here. Um, and it's just a case of discovering what the options are and in that discovery actually applying that potentially to any type of um, application. Now for us at RF Shop on Black Art Technologies we would be looking at IoT, we would be looking at stuff that gets used in the marine industry, in um, space industry, in all sorts of applications. So not specifically looking at 4G, 5G, but it is a vehicle or tool that we can use with the RUTX50 from Teltonico plus their battery and our coaxial cables to provide a whole picture of what is possible plus learning on the way as well. So today the why is just it's fun I'm going to do this and I'm going to do more of this. The next question is why is how? So how am I going to do this? Well today obviously this is for users, end users that um, could use 4G, 5G to show this is how we would just prove that something works before we go into the nerdy science. After that, I'm going to test it on a Magic Q RMS system. So we are currently um, in possession of the RMS system. We're going to measure the radiation patterns of these antennas later this week. And I will show you that the design we've done in CST, the tool that we're using, comes out and can get measured so that we can see what, what I experienced today in the network can be kind of um, put on a plot and you can explain why things work the way they work. And then the last step is, what am I doing? Now, obviously, it's a 3D printed antenna, but what is also the detail in there, which I will get to later. Specifically, 3D printing, the type of printer I'm using, and the material that we are actually investigating. So, from that perspective, we are specifically looking at the um, new material available from WavePro. So, WavePro is a, a, a company in the uh, United States. They develop uh, dielectric material specifically based on Teflon and there is a variant of the same material that can be used for PC boards. So that's what I'm using here is for the radiator elements. I'm using the WavePro material um, with copper cladding on there so that I can get the shape of the antenna structure on the antenna itself. So that I will do on the third video and then we can talk about more about WavePro themselves. On the next few videos I'm also going to talk more about the MagicQ test system that we use to measure the antennas. But today it's just walking down the beach here at Christie's Beach to see how far we can get 5.8 gigahertz Wi-Fi still working on my phone. So it's pretty simple, pretty um, pretty straightforward as well. I'm going to test the Wi-Fi 5.8 on my phone. I'm not going to test 2.4 because we know that can go much further. So I, this is a two kilometer um, beach. I think if we can get 5.8 but further down, maybe not, maybe not two kilometers, we'd be very happy. 2.4, it is possible. 5.8, let's see what we can get. So this is it. So I tuned the antenna the whole array. So the top antennas are my 4G, 5G antennas. They are facing in a direction that seem to get the best signal. So that's my my cellular connection. It's cabled in, as you can see, with the cables connected to the modem. The modem is powered with the BAT120, the battery from Teltonica. So it's all in itself, it's self-contained. You, you could pick it up, this, this whole setup here. If you were to be a nerdy caravaner, that's what you could do. But if you want to have a more compact solution, replace these with off-the-shelf antennas such as the um, Export 2 or Export 24 for pointing and you can also replace this with some basic panel antennas as well to get Wi-Fi in a specific direction if the antennas from the Teltonica is not good enough. If they are, well then all you need to do is a tripod like this, you have your modem, you have a battery and you have an antenna on the top. That's really it. So for now let's just see what we get in um, just, just being here. So I'm just going to turn on my recorder um, you see, microphone's on, start recording. Okay, so I'm recording my screen. So now, first of all, you can see I turned off my mobile phone. 
So I'm not connected to the cellular network at all. All my internet connections are coming through the um, RUT X50. Now I'm connected to 3D printed antennas.com 5.8 gigahertz network. That's the 5.8 network, I just changed the name. The other one you see on my screen there is the 2 gig network and I'm not connected to that, just to make sure that we are using the correct one. If I were to go to the um, login page for Teltonica, I've already logged in just before to check that it's working. Network, go there, mobile, connected, 5G network type. Connected, signal strength, excellent. So, if you do your own antenna such as these, which you can get from RF Shop as well, or Blackout Technologies, you can get a connection. You can see there, RSRQ is good, excellent. It, it fluctuates as time goes, but basically, we are connected to the network, all working fine. Now, Wi-Fi. Of course, I'm standing right next to the antenna, so it shows me I have a full screen. Now, one thing that is pretty cool is speedtest.net, which of course we all know because we get a lot of inquiries from people asking for speedtest.net results. You can go and check your download speed, which is what we're all familiar with. Um, that's nice, but that's academic by nature. So actually our ping is phenomenal. Our connection is, well, download to 200, more than 200 down. Um, so it is working. I'm standing right in front of my antenna, so I wouldn't expect anything else. But what is pretty cool is the video test, which is also quite useful. The upload, by the way, is awesome. So if you were to go to video, you can actually test your video quality because fast is fast is fast. Does it work for video? That's an interesting artifact. So currently just I quickly jumped over to running a, a video test, which I will do later on. But this is a baseline slide. Spoke way too much, but the video is running. Everything is working. You can just walk down the beach and see if we can still get 5.8 gig. We'll go 100, 200 meters, maybe 500 meters, see if we still get a connection. So let's go for a walk. So when I actually recorded this video that you see there, I forgot to turn on my main camera. So these are the results that I got at the first measurement, which was 50 meters down. It wasn't too bad at all. So I just went walking further to the next step. So there we go, back to the video itself. All right, I moved probably another 50 meters, so I'm now about 100 meters away from the, um, the system. Just recording my screen, see how my 5.8 gig system is going. So, still connected. On my iPhone, it's now saying two out of, out of possible three bars. So, it is getting lower, which is good, because we want to test reality. We don't want to go forever, we want to see what we actually can get. So, just back on speedtest.net, and go, tell us the test. So as you could imagine, we're walking away, so the antenna stays the same, everything stays the same. You can see it's a notable drop. It's now 38. The connection is still more than happy to continue. Um, so there you go, 50 down, 80 up, and just making 100% sure. No, my cellular is still down. All right, so, okay, have another stroll. Okay, so now, I'd say I'm about another 100 meters, maybe a bit more away. Can I have another go? See if um, my, my phone still says I have two signals, so two out of the um, two out of the possible three bars. So I'm happy. If I were just an everyday user, I'd say this is working. But um, let's again just do our trusty speedtest.net. Um, taking it. so 24 down. You can see it's dropping. As I said, it is not about the perfect, it is how far can we go. I think I'm about 150, 200 meters away. Okay, that's it. I'm happy with that. Now, just to show you where we are, down at the end of the beach, that's where the camera, the, the um, antenna is. So that is quite far. All right, I'm gonna keep walking. So next step, so I am now, I'd say, I don't know how much far anymore, but basically there's a building that I'm facing, I'll turn around now, it's, it's a waterworks building. When I go to Google Earth later to calculate my distances, I can use that to give me a proper pin drop measurement how far I am away from my antennas over there. Um, so just going to repeat the test, so first of all record my screen, yep, I can still see the 2 gig. So that's expected. The 2 gig network, which is the one that reads here, RUT3546 underscore 2G. No, no, I lied. 
it came up, it found it. So I think this is the limit. This is where I'm going to say I can still get a connection. I can still do something at, at 5.8 gig. If we were to have tested 2.4 gigahertz, I could have gone much further, um, got some connection. But the point here is actually, let's see how far we can go with the higher performing, but more sensitive technologies. So anyway, we are connected to the um, 5.8 gigahertz network. One bar strong, it says it's all good. So, right. It says it's connected, but how useful is it? Not good. Um, go. All right. Not bad. The ping is still awesome. Download speed is actually not totally ridiculous. We are still getting a connection. So, over this distance, which I will print down at the bottom of the screen because I know where I am, but I can't tell you right now as I'm standing here. Um, we still get a connection that I would say it is functional. And once I'm finished here, I'll switch over to the actual um, video test so we can see what the speedtest.net app tells us is the limit of the video um, connection that we can expect. It's, um, it's going to be limited, do not expect 4K. Um, so 6.9 down, 2.7 up, but the ping is still the same as we had all along because of the network itself. So the connection from the cellular network to the modem and to me is the, the, the speed is good in terms of ping speed, the latency, but the, um, you know, because of losses and signal quality, the things are becoming a bit troublesome. Now, just go to video test. All right, so let's see what we get. Max resolution, 480p. Okay, well, that's what it is. So I'm okay with that because that's the limit that we can reach. So there we go. See, there's the building behind me. So that's the building I will use in Google Maps. In essence, this is the distance that we got from the actual experiment. The lesson here learned is it works. So the four, the 3D printed antennas are functional. They are good to use and there's a, there's a definite opportunity in there to proceed and get something going. More detail about the 3D printed um, concept will be discussed during the year. I have some presentations that I need to give and also the whole picture is not just you do 3D printing because it's easier to make but also it helps you to get rapid prototyping and it helps you to um, actually get an answer quicker and sometimes there's mechanical bits that you need to get done that you can done with a 3d printer and it's hassle free there we go thanks for watching see you on the next video which i'm going to shoot at the back of our yard when i test the actual antenna performance both on the dishes and on the um the compact spiral antennas on a magic rms system and following that i will talk more about the material we use in there Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.